Hello friends, welcome to this class and um, we'll be looking at labor skills and um, in the context of international economics and it's important to know that there are two basic types of migration studied by demographers. One is internal migration and the second is in international migration. Now the first refers to where people move within their e economy, within their country, within the boundary of the nations. People traveling from one part of the country to the other, from rural communities to the cities. That is internal migration. Now the international migration, like the name implies, has to do with movement across borders. People moving from one country to the other. And in this particular topic, we'll be focusing on international migration. Okay, now international <coughs> labor migration, international labor migration has a lot to do with mobility, movement of labor from one particular country to another country, especially within a period of a year. If somebody goes out for one month, two, two months, three months contract, it is not considered to have moved totally so the period minimum period required is a year for it to be counted as movement of labor in that context now international labor migration of course in all economies of the world both in developed and developing economies okay now and then it now depends on the direction of movement and it plays key role in the development of the society as a whole. It has, we'll be looking at the benefits for the country where the labor is moving from and the country where the labor is coming into. Now, but before we do that, it's important to note two basic interdependent process of um, international migration. Now, one has to do with um, people moving from a particular country out and then people moving into another country. Okay, and that is the context concept of um, immigration and migration. The concept of immigration and migration. Now, people departing from one country to another country. If country A is, is where somebody is moving out from, so there is immigration. The person is launching out from that country. And then immigration is where someone is not entering country A. And then you also have a third situation where people who had been in a particular country for one reason or the other, maybe crisis left and they are coming back again and that is re-migration or they, they've gone out, out of their country and have stayed there for some time and maybe they left because of terrible e economic situation and things get improved in future and they decide to return back to their country or to the former country. So you talk about re-migration. Okay, now there are forms of um, migration um, we have people who move totally and they are going to another country to settle totally and that is permanent migration and we also have people who uh, people we also have people who yeah we also have people who move for within a period of time okay they move they move within a period of time leaving their home country to another country but then their their entry into that country has expiring time and once that time elapses they are by law required to return back to their country and then the legal migration these are people who move into another country in violation of the country's rules they say they don't want somebody to come in and you find an illegal way of coming in you are considered an illegal migrant okay you know or people who have entered a country and their permits have elapsed and they decided to find a way of hiding within that economy is also considered as illegal migration it often happens between you know when people are moving from poorer nation to richer country maybe because they are looking for greener pasture okay now <clears throat> in the international level the direction of movement could differ you know depending on how this is 
needed. So international labor market tells us a lot about the flow of labor across borders. Okay, just like we move capital, just like we move goods, just like we move services. Okay, so it's an informal market that exists somewhere you can't tell. But that market is servicing supplies and demand of labor or of services in different countries of the world. In other words, international labor market exists in the form of labor migration. Okay, and then it's important to know that there are factors that influence international labor mobility. The factors could be internal within the economy, the factors could be external happening across the world. And those factors include political factors, it could be military, it could be religious crisis, it could be religious advancement, it could be national issue, it could be cultural challenge, it could be family. And then there are some other social factors, you know, that affect movement of um, labor across borders. Now, what is the basic of uh, the objective basis of labor migration? Now, it has a lot to do with attractiveness, you know, in a particular economy. So, labor moves from the country of low standard of living, low income, to where the the demand is required, where the the, the, the wage is higher, you know. So, the basic objective of labor migration has a lot to do with differences in level of wages and it's important you note it okay differences in level of wages that determines movement a lot about um, about um, <coughs> labor how it moves depends on where which is in most cases higher but then if you look at the factors influencing it you could have a higher wage somewhere but there is crisis there so because of such crisis people may not want to go there you know but on a, a normal on a normal basis what drives it is price of labor okay now the direction could be from country that is developing to a very industrialized nation it can also be from a particular um, industrialized nation and they are looking for developing countries where they want to go and invest. It can also be scientists who are moving from industrialized country to developing country or scientists who are moving from developing country to industrialized nation where their services are required. Consequences of le uh, international level movements. You know, there are different consequences. Now, they show up in different ways. It could benefit both country the, the truth is that globally the, the world wins in, in the movement of labor but then the, the benefit for the country where the labor is moving from you know is often uh, you know that they the, doesn't catch up in most cases with them um, the, the losses you know in other ways analysis have shown that there are more benefits obtained by country of migration where the labor is moving into We'll look at some of those benefits quickly and then the, the, the countries where the labor is moving out from what could be the losses you know is actually in most cases higher than the benefits okay in, in, in most African countries we talk about brain drill where the best of the people are moving out to more developed economy and they are no longer available for the development of their you know, local economy so the country of immigration where this people this labor is moving into what are the benefits accrued to them okay what are the benefits accrued to them now number one is that of course it's it's it enhances demand and supply of goods when more people are in that economy the demand for goods will increase and then that will stimulate economic um, production and growth okay then it also enhances um, the issue of um, production cost gets reduced because uh, as more things are being produced uh, and of course if, if more labor have entered the economy the price of labor will go down which will result in lower cost of production 
and so you see more of the products being produced and then the hosting country also has them um, a lot to benefit from tax many african players play in european nations and if you know how much each of these players pay in tax to the government of the hosting country you you'll be able to understand what it means you know that um people you know the country that are hosting the country that are hosting actually benefiting a lot from taxes from these migrants now there's something called um, vo 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 uh, voting by leg or foot voting foot voting is very common in countries like united states of america where you can live in a particular state state a and you are working in state b as long as the government in state a is providing you the facilities you need you stay there and where you reside is where you pay your tax and so if the government in state a is not providing you the facilities you need to be comfortable you can decide to relocate to state c whereas we are still working in state b and then the government in state c will begin to benefit from your tax and that phenomena is called voting by leg and that is what people in most cases do you know when they feel that the government is not benefiting them they move away from where they are the other benefit that accrue to immigrating nation the country where these people are entering is the fact that they bring knowledge transfer of knowledge when you travel from another country to another country and you are interacting working with people there invariably you'll be rubbing off on them the knowledge you have come with okay and then the foreign workers are often considered as shock observers if the economy is having a challenge and the country decides that look we want to reduce the number of um, we want to reduce the number of um, unemployment by making sure our people are employed and all of that they may decide to lay off or there is an unemployment challenge they may decide to lay off first the foreigners leaving their own citizens okay even developing countries also practice it in, in countries like nigeria um, some there is this policy that you cannot employ a foreigner on a permanent basis for a position that a nigerian can do and so you, you it helps them to absorb a lot of shock now migrants also improve the demography of the nation in some countries that are suffering Age, aging population you know when younger people are coming in it helps to strike a balance and it goes a long way to reflect in development activities now what is the benefit accruing to the country where this labor is moving out from one the of course it reduces unemployment because the pressure in the market labor market is reduced more people as people are jackbarring as people are stepping out from their country you know those who are around will have the opportunity and then it, it frees you know free labor training when they go out in most cases they get to learn new things and so they may bring back this knowledge to their domestic economy then a lot a lot of them also send back money to their families they left behind in terms of um, remittances so these are benefits that accrue to countries i mean this this is one important question you may want to think about the current political debate on migration is often based on misconception about the relationship between migration job and development see it threatens migration jobs and development now the question could be what are some of the ways in which labor migration benefits migrant workers and their family as well as their origin and destination countries you know um these are things you need to think about I, I try to present three key points that could be possible response to such cases of course there are remittances sent back home to the country to the to the homes where this labor have moved out from okay and then the migrants also contribute to sustainable development in their state of origin in a way of financing investment they can also invite or train people so so these are the benefits that could accrue it also has a lot to do with them um, meeting the the, the the once they they are out of the place 
and then they they, they benefit the destination country where they have gone to by ensuring that um, shortage of labor is is, is 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 the gap in shortage of labor is bridged they add to the labor supply they pay taxes and then they also contribute in the um, development of the country where they have found themselves another important question is this what is ILO and what is its mandate? Of course, you cannot finish international level um, discussion without talking about um, without talking about international level organization. International level organization actually out to handle three major things. One, they try to link bring link together government, labor, and workers in a way that makes worker you know promote um, a decent job for everybody whether male or female okay so that's the major mandate of international level organization okay now the other thing you may want to think about which is also of interest is what effect does labor migration have on countries of immigration the country where they have landed what effects does it have two key things the country of migration is the country that receives the people right okay now when they come in there they increase the labor force and as a result of increasing the labor force the prices of production could come down and that will accelerate economic activities and also increase demand because they will equally begin to make their own demands on the services and goods produced in that country. So thank you very much for joining us in this class. I wish you the very best in the rest of your activities. Cheers.